Locked and loaded. The new message from President Trump as tensions rise with Iran after that attack on one of the largest oil facilities in the world in Saudi Arabia. The price of oil skyrockets overnight. Our Martha Reddit standing by with the latest. Breaking news on strike. Nearly 50,000 General Motors workers walking off the job right now, the largest walkout in a decade. Supreme Court chaos. The new report about Justice Brett Kavanaugh alleging another case of sexual misconduct while in college. The 2020 candidates now calling for impeachment as President Trump comes to his defense. Furious flames, the new warning out west. Firefighters racing to contain at least a dozen wildfires. This as we track that new tropical threat. Umberto now strengthening to a hurricane. Caught on camera. Terrifying home invasion. The mother and son lucky to be okay after two masked men kick in their front door. Ballroom bombshell. The Dancing with the Stars stunner. Christy Brinkley breaking her arm in this fall. Out of the contest before the season even begins. Now her daughter stepping into her dancing shoes. And celebrating the American original who was just what we needed. The car's front man passing away. The tributes pouring in for the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. We do say good morning, America. The world's celebrating the man behind so many big hits from the 70s and 80s. You've been humming along over oh, there. Rick yeah. Kasich, one of my first cassette tapes that I played over and over again. The Cars, a staple on the airwaves. He was just inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame last year. We'll have much more mm. on his amazing life and musical achievements. Yeah, hey. not only his achievements, a hard rocker, but a very gentle and sensitive, yes, kind man. Yes, he was. We're going to have more on that coming up. We begin, though, with the escalating tensions in the Persian Gulf after that massive attack that crippled key oil facilities in Saudi Arabia. The Trump administration is blaming Iran for the attack. That regime denies the claim, and oil prices soared overnight after President Trump warned the U.S. is locked and loaded for potential retaliation. Our chief global affairs anchor, Martha Raddatz, is tracking all the latest from Washington. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, George. This is one of the most serious foreign policy challenges the president has faced, with global consequences, a spike in oil prices, and the possibility of a major military conflict with Iran. This morning, with some of the world's largest oil processing facilities in Saudi Arabia still smoldering, President Trump threatening military action in retaliation, tweeting, we are locked and loaded depending on verification. But a senior administration official tells ABC News that the highly coordinated attack was launched from Iranian soil. Nearly a dozen cruise missiles and at least 20 drones packed with explosives, pounding multiple targets at the facilities. The massive blaze lighting up the skies, the smoke and fire visible from space. If the Iranians directly attack the Saudis, it's a major escalation and the first time we have seen a direct attack by the Iranians on Saudi territory. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo pointing the finger at Iran as well in a tweet calling on all nations to publicly and unequivocally condemn Iran's attacks, which Iran flatly denies. The Iranian foreign minister mocking Pompeo, saying the U.S. having failed at max pressure, now turning to max deceit. Over the summer, Iran was accused of attacking oil tankers in the Persian Gulf and shooting down a highly sophisticated and costly U.S. drone. After threats of military action, President Trump then called off retaliatory strikes, but this time could be different. This is as close as the U.S. has come to a direct confrontation with Iran since this st standoff began. An official telling ABC News it may take six months to repair and oil, said the official, predicted to go up $20 a barrel. President Trump is trying to reassure Americans, tweeting plenty of oil, but promising to tap into the strategic oil reserves if necessary. This while the administration is trying to figure out how to respond to this brazen attack. George? Martha Raddatz, thanks very much. Robin? And George, now to that massive walkout. Nearly 50,000 United Auto Workers striking against General Motors this morning. 55 plants all around the country shut down. Alex Perez is in Detroit, where workers have been protesting since early this morning. Good morning, Alex. 
Hey, good morning, Robin. The union said there would be a strike if a deal wasn't reached by midnight, and that's exactly what happened here. I want you to take a look behind me here. You can see a number of workers already on the picket lines here. The union says they're fighting for better wages, better benefits, and their share of profits. General Motors says they've made a substantial offer that includes 5,400 new jobs and saving two plants that were slated to be closed. But the union says that is simply not enough. They're scheduled to get back in negotiations later today. Cecilia? Okay, Alex, thanks. Let's bring in our chief economics correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, for more on this auto worker strike and, of course, those tensions in the Middle East. Let's start with the, the walkout. A prolonged strike here could really end up hurting both sides. Well, that's right, because there are costs on both sides of this, Cecilia. For General Motors, this strike costs about $1.3 million every single hour that it takes place. Meantime, the workers who you see walking out on strike are collecting much fewer wages than a typical week. They're now collecting about $250 a week. On average, they collect about $1,200 a week. So you can imagine the pocketbook issues, Cecilia, particularly for those workers who are now on strike and waiting for a deal. Yeah, those numbers are just staggering. In the Middle East, that 6% loss on the world's oil supply. What's it going to mean for consumers here? When will they start to feel that? Well, it's important to remember that the oil market is worldwide. Even though the United States produces a huge amount of oil, we're actually the second largest producer of oil in the world. We are still feeling that impact on prices this morning. Overnight, oil prices surged 10 percent, up five dollars, and that translates at the pump to about 10 to 24 cents higher. And you're going to see that in the coming days. Now, the question is, how much longer does this last? Because the Saudi say that they're going to be able to bring back some production. The question is that uncertainty that now hangs over the market and any additional uncertainty that gets added, Cecilia, that's where you start to see potential for prices going even higher. And in particular in California, which gets a lot of its imported oil from Saudi, they will definitely see their prices spike even more. We'll be staying on this one today. Yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. You, you always talk about how uncertainty the market does not like it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Now to the growing questions this morning over that new report about Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. New sexual misconduct allegations when he was a college freshman. President Trump coming to his defense, but some 2020 candidates are calling for impeachment. Senior National Correspondent Terry Moran is at the Supreme Court with more on all this. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Robin. Justice Brett Kavanaugh was confirmed last year to the Supreme Court by the narrowest margin in the Senate in 130 years, in part because of those allegations of sexual misconduct made by former classmates at Yale University. Now on, he's on the court, another allegation has arisen, and the White House is girding for battle. It's been a year since that heated confirmation hearing for Justice Brett Kavanaugh, but this morning he's facing a newly reported allegation from his college days. According to the New York Times, Max Steyer, Kavanaugh's former Yale classmate, told senators and the FBI that he saw Mr. Kavanaugh with his pants down at a drunken dorm party where friends pushed his genitals onto a female student. President Trump rushing to Kavanaugh's defense this weekend, tweeting that Kavanaugh is an innocent man man and suggesting Kavanaugh start suing people for libel. Kavanaugh's defenders say the Times report, adapted from a book coming out this week, leaves out a very important detail. The book says that the female student Steyer described, quote, refused to discuss the incident and several of her friends said she does not recall it. This article just shows the obsession with the far left, with, with trying to smear yes. Justice Kavanaugh uh, b b by going 30 years back with anonymous sources. While Kavanaugh declined to comment, the report is similar to another accusation made last year by another former Yale classmate, Deborah Ramirez. Ramirez alleged Kavanaugh exposed himself to her at a different party when they were both drunk, and when she shoved him away, she says she was touched without her consent. Are Ms. Ramirez's allegations about you true? Those are not. Um, she, um, no, no, none of the witnesses in the room support that. Uh, the, if that, that had happened, that would have been the talk of campus uh, in our freshman dorm. Kavanaugh has also denied claims of sexual assault made by Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, who testified during Kavanaugh's heated confirmation hearing that he held her down and groped her. I believed he was going to rape me. This whole two-week effort has been a calculated and orchestrated political hit. 
While the FBI investigated Blasey Ford's and Ramirez's stories last year and found no corroboration of the allegations, the New York Times reports that the Bureau did not investigate Max Steyer's story, even though he notified the FBI and members of the Senate. Democrats say Kavanaugh should never have been confirmed. My concern here is that the process was a sham. Um, I don't think the woman at the center of these most recent allegations spoke briefly to ABC News outside her home in Boston. The woman who ABC News is not naming at this time uh, said she was not interested in speaking to reporters because she was involved in the reporting last year during the confirmation process and she quote can't do it again. However, when she was asked if there were other sources to speak to about this story, she said, quote, all I can say is ask Brett. George? Okay, Terry Moran, thanks very much. Let's bring in our senior congressional correspondent, Mary Bruce, for more uh, on this. And Mary, Democratic candidates for President Pound saying this is grounds for Kavanaugh to be removed from office. Yeah, George, the calls for Kavanaugh to go are now growing. This morning, at least six of the Democratic presidential candidates say Kavanaugh should be removed from the bench. Elizabeth Warren tweeting that confirmation is not exoneration, saying these newest revelations are disturbing, while Kamala Harris says that his place on the court is an insult to the pursuit of truth and justice. Now, Joe Biden is stopping short of calling for Kavanaugh to be impeached, but he says this latest report is deeply troubling and says there needs to be an investigation into whether the FBI was pressured to ignore some of this evidence. And, and Mary, as a practical matter, of course, impeachment would have to start in, in the House, several Democrats behind it, but it's still a pretty high bar. Yeah, impeachment is technically possible, but it certainly seems unlikely. Now, sources on the House Judiciary Committee tell us that they are considering all of their options, and we know that Chairman Nadler has said before that he intended to look into the Kavanaugh matter, but even if the Democrats in the House take action, it isn't likely to go anywhere over in the Republican-controlled Senate, where Leader Mitch McConnell this morning is making it very clear that he's standing by Justice Kavanaugh. George. Mary Bruce, thanks very much. Cecilia? Okay, George, there are new developments this morning in the war on vaping. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo issuing an emergency exam executive order banning the sale of those flavored e-cigarettes here in the state. Critics say those flavored pods are targeted toward teenagers. The Trump administration has proposed a national ban on flavored e-cigarettes. Also this morning, new developments involving Purdue Pharma, the company that made billions selling the prescription painkiller OxyContin, has now filed for bankruptcy. This comes, of course, just days after reaching a tentative settlement with many of the state and local governments suing it over the toll of opioids. That settlement expected to be worth billions, but this legal battle is far from over. About half of the states suing have not signed on to that settlement, Robin. Like you said, far from over. Yeah. Okay, Cecilia, now to the NFL. It's star Antonio Brown taking the field for the first time since those sexual assault allegations surfaced against him, playing with his new team, the Patriots, as his accuser prepares to meet with the league today. Paula Ferris is here with those details. Good morning, Paula. Good morning, Robin, and we have learned that settlement discussions between Antonio Brown and his accuser began as early as April. Brown not speaking to reporters after his Patriots debut on Sunday, instead letting his play do all the talking. End zone. With controversy swirling all around, superstar wide receiver Antonio Brown making a high-flying debut with the New England Patriots. Antonio Brown, the newest Patriot. Brown scoring his first touchdown with the reigning Super Bowl champs less than a week after his former fitness trainer, Brittany Taylor, filed a civil lawsuit accusing Brown of rape and sexual assault. This, as sources tell ABC News, the former LSU gymnast is preparing to meet with the NFL investigators later today. We now know that representatives for Brown and Taylor have been discussing a settlement for months. ABC News learning that just days before the lawsuit was filed, Brown refused to settle for $2 million. A source also telling ABC News Taylor initially asked for over $10 million. On Friday, the 31-year-old who denies the allegations appeared to address the claims in this video, live streamed from Tom Brady's training facility. Stay focused. The devil going to try to bring you down when you get closer to your goals. Catch and curl, Antonio Brown. On Sunday, Brown took the field after the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell, decided not to place the seven-time pro bowler on the commissioner's exempt list, the NFL's version of paid leave. That's an ABTD. After the game where the Patriots soundly defeated the Miami Dolphins, Brown avoided the media. Meantime, his quarterback, tight-lipped about the NFL's decision allowing Brown to play. I don't make any of those decisions, so I just show up and play and do my job. 
Now, helmet maker Zenith has announced that it's ending its endorsement deal with Brown. Meantime, all of this is going on as ABC News has learned that Brittany Taylor, she got married over the weekend and her interview with the NFL is today. The league is seeking to interview other potential witnesses and gather additional evidence. This is far from over. Right. Thanks, Paula. Thank you, Paula. Switch now and remember Rick Ocasek. Tributes pouring in for the founder of the Cars, the groundbreaking band that ruled the airwaves in the 70s and 80s. Ocasek died at his Manhattan townhouse on Sunday, and Chris Connolly is here with a celebration of his life and distinctive sound. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, George. During an era of pop's most passionate shouters, Rick Ocasek of the Cars was cool and dry, and for decades, millions were thrilled by his sleek, meticulously crafted rock and roll. As songwriter and frontman for the Cars, Rick Ocasek used state-of-the-art pop craft and an offbeat sensibility to create radio-friendly hits that helped to define the late 70s, early 80s rock sound. Working alongside bassist vocalist Benjamin Orr, Ocasek led the Cars to success with the release of their self-titled debut in 1978. It was catchy, contemporary rock, and the hits kept coming. You might think I'm crazy. Hang around with you. The video for Drive would feature Sports Illustrated swimsuit model Paulina Porizkova. She and Ocasek would wed in 1989 and have two children together. Just shake it up. Later in the decade, the cars went their separate ways. On his own, Ocasek would have some hits. Emotion in Motion in 1986. Rick Ocasek died on Sunday at the age of 75, leaving songs as full of clever invention and sly delight as the day they were recorded. Rick Ocasek really was one of pop music's premier magicians, and he left us with a lot of music to enjoy. That first album alone, unbelievable, George. Oh, boy, it sure was. We remember all the hits mm -hmm. as they kept coming. I know, I know, I know. We've been ranking them. Oh, that one was good. That <laughs> one is good. Oh, that one was good, too. So many good songs. You had a cassette? Oh, I, yeah. I, I see your cassette and raise you an 8-track. Oh, I had those, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old enough. <laughs> we are following a lot of other stories this morning, including the latest on Felicity Huffman. She was, of course, sentenced to two weeks in prison in the college admission scandal. We're going to tell you what that could mean for Lori Laughlin's case. And take a look at this terrifying home invasion. A mother and son, luckily they are okay after mass men tried to break in. How the mother scared them away. You're going to want to hear this. But first, let's go back to Ginger. Ginger? Hey, Robin, I'm here in Southern California. It has been hot, windy, and dry, really difficult for fire conditions. And you can see there the horseshoe fire. Uh, that has been burning at least 490 acres. It's 30% contained. There are red flag warnings all the way from the state line of California to Nevada, and extreme fire danger through much of the state of Nevada into Utah, all for gusts of about 30 to 50. It'll be a little better in Northern California where it's cooler and a little wetter. But look at that. We also have a threat in the Atlantic. That's Umberto, a hurricane now. What it should do is bring high surf. We're talking waves up to seven feet, rip currents along the coast from North Carolina down to Florida, even in the East Coast in a couple of days, because this thing will be that strong. All right, let's go ahead and get to the select cities now, brought to you by Amazon. Just smile for me and let the day begin. Free delivery, even on furniture, with Prime. Dress for some high summer heat today and high humidity. Temperature is going to be rising very quickly to 90 degrees after we hit that 84, 85 around recess to lunchtime today. That 90 again, sticky and uncomfortable. Tomorrow we'll start to see the humidity levels come down after a few showers pass through the area. Just a few light showers, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. And then Wednesday, Thursday, highs in the upper 70s and very low humidity levels. Comfortable pretty much all week and into the weekend. Coming up, including Make Your Monday. Mm -hmm. What are you talking that? about recording off recording the radio? Recording off the radio on a cassette. We're going way back here, the way back machine. <laughs> we'll be right back. I wanted more from my COPD medicine. That's why I've got the power of one, two, three medicines with Trelegy. The only FDA-approved three-in-one COPD treatment. Trilogy. 